please welcome Mr. Red We Met. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Well, well. Here we are. Well, it's about August 14th, 2023. Well, at least we're consistent. We had three lates, one no show, and well, I think we're, if I remember one time, we're on, maybe twice we're on exactly four. Jeez. So somebody put in the comments here, maybe he forgot to push the on the air. <laughs> we were on for They're minutes. sort of right. Why don't you take responsibility, Red, and say <laughs> that I was waiting to get invited. Take responsibility? Okay, folks, I will explain to you. Joe um, didn't get my invite, and he had to wait. I, I called him just a few minutes ago, and I sent him the invite because he didn't get it. Okay, I can hear now. Is everything cool? Everything is yeah. cool. Okay, I said it'd be nice for you to take responsibility and say, you know, I didn't invite Joe today. Now, could I have thought outside the box? Sure. Should I check in with you five minutes to four? Probably. Um, but normally you would kind of, normally you sent that little, hi, Joe, we're on in 15 minutes and, you know, whatever. So maybe, and I tried to call you this weekend. You know, normally we'd have our, you know, four hour talks. That didn't happen this weekend. So I feel like I was no. neglected. You know, <laughs> I feel like, I'll tell you one thing. I don't know about your listeners. I hate Mondays. Never liked them. I think it was all that working from Monday through Saturday, selling cars. You have your Sunday off, right? It takes you totally off your game. And then Monday comes and the old man's giving a meeting at nine in the morning, talking about his life, you know, every Monday motivation meeting and you know, whatever. And we sit there and it was, it was good. Pay out the spiffs and all the um, weekend, you know, they have like contests, three cars sold. So and we had about uh, on the average of 55 to 70 guys, 55 to 70, you know? So actually, yes. I don't know if I told you yesterday, I went to awake, you know, the guy, um, Joe Aneka, God rest his soul. Joe owned the galaxy bookstore with Frank Esposito and he owned the Admiral for a little while. That's the gentleman that lived with Seika. You know, the porn star, he met her at the Admiral and a uh, nice guy. He's about uh, six years younger than me. His father, hey, there he is. There he is. Texas. His dad owned U S electric and married Dom Cortina's daughter back in the eighties. So his mother, his dad left his mother, beautiful lady, Vicky saw her last night. Wonderful lady, class act, beautiful woman. Beautiful woman. And uh, so I talked to her a little bit, saw Joe. They It was cremated, you know. You know, you don't go to too many open caskets anymore, really. You know, I think the funerals are worse than mobsters. They gouge funeral homes. Let's be honest. It's, you know, it's 10 grand for one day for a funeral. 10 Gs, three Gs for the casket. And uh, that's, that's a lot of money, you know. You're better off, you know, getting a pine basket for $200 and <laughs> having a ceremony at my house, right? I mean, think about it I for had a second. A couple of viewings. I, I, we rent the, we rent the coffin, right? The casket. Yeah. We rent the casket. The viewing is then, and then after the viewing, they put them in the container, <laughs> put them in the oven. Oh my! <laughs> oh my God! Oh, you know what? Listen, you know you're, you're right, but that's true. Know, <laughs> Listen, there are pine caskets, but not to get more. But yeah, I went to his wake, and it was nice seeing uh, seeing him. Seeing the family there, but his um, Vicky, his stepmother, that would be, she married uh, U.S. Electric. Had Leo Marcy. I remember uh, the early days they got the contract, and then they said, "Nice crime, you know, connected, connected." I don't think about you know are we connected? Listen, usually See what the Chris people said? that they say they're connected. What's that? See what Chris what? says, I built mine out. My father's out of pine. Yeah, well, I don't know. Red, if I go before you, if I go before you, by then, you know, I think I want you to give my eulogy by then. You know, push all the relatives out and say, listen, I've known Joe, well, for I don't know how long that would be, but let's just say it's short. A few years, right? 
say he's a great guy and give everybody a t-shirt all our listeners who come to the to, to the thing we give them a free t-shirt that's nice something for them to remember me is you know but um, i want i yeah. want an open bar well that's what they do now the irish do that remember the old days after I, 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 I want irish wait, three days three days i want to be here. Red. The old days, they wake them at five for five days at the house. Remember, back in and in, in the sometimes people got up out of the casket, you know, because they were in a coma or something. I've heard that. Yeah, they, who wants to get waked at the house? Hell with that. Well, it's wrong if you don't have a house. Hey, if you don't have a house, they'll wake you. If you're homeless, they'll wake you in the street. But again, back to that. Get back to what I was talking about earlier. My dad had a French, French restaurant. Okay. 75 in Elmhurst. He liked French food, so he bought a restaurant and made her French. The guy that ran it was a maitre d' at a French restaurant, so he brought the guy over. Um, what happened was, back then, that's when I was a busboy, okay? And so, I, Joey uh, Lombardo, that's where the wise guys came. So before, I used to wash their cars periodically, and then they would come there for dinner, and they would sit at the bar. And, uh, you know, I forgot to tell you, a lot of times they came by themselves. That was weird. I'd never seen like four of those guys drive together. It's always one car. Yeah. They drove by themselves, which I thought was, you know, weird. But they did. They would come walking alone. So, anyways, after that restaurant, my dad had, my dad caught the um, the cook stealing. He was getting the meat, was coming there on Fridays. You know, let's talk about steak Diane, beef Wellington, you know, all that shit. Well, the meats were, uh, I think, right. The guy was stealing. The cook was selling the meat, four dollars a week, back in the middle seventies to some somebody down the street. So, my dad fires the he fires the maitre d, obviously, which was the boss there. And the next restaurant was called the Florentine House. The guy that ran it, well, the guy that actually owed it, paid rent to my dad for the building. He was the president of the Barbers Union. Did you know they had a president of the Barbers Union back then? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it was Patsy De Costanza, God rest his soul, he died. And he got shot in the leg. Uh, I guess he was not going to run. I didn't even know they had those. Uh, uh, um, Barber Union, whatever. But he, he was connected. So, get this now. Now, my dad gets him in there. My dad goes, I don't want no bookmaking out of there, right? You know, I don't. your wife wants to cook. You make it legit. But no, none of that crap, right? Well, he's there about eight months a year. And the accountant says, you know, Nick, I got all these checks. They're coming in here. Is the positive? What do you mean checks for food? No, they're five hundred thousand, two hundred. Oh no, they're booking out. You know, they they think that's it. They're done. And laundering it through the laundering it through the restaurant. Right. Well, guess what? Now my dad didn't own it, but he owned the building. But people are gonna think, oh, there you, there you go. So he told Patsy, "You got to go." He's a grease ball from Italy. Oh, he's wearing the suits. He says, "You got to leave. I can't have it." So he threw him out. The next guy that came in was um, the great Italian food and beverage company, El, uh, El Mio, from Mio's. Uh, his father on Lake Street, Addison, I think. His father was a connected guy, but that's because all the wise guys would go there and eat So at the restaurant. So if you call that connected because you have a restaurant well, not, and the wise guy. Didn't his father own Mio's Norwood House? Yeah, that's it. Right. Mio's and Norwood House. That's right. That's right. I That's right. Very good. Was he was he connected guy? No. Maybe connected. What's the word? Connected means what? Are you are you not part of the organization? What are you like associate connected? What? He was associated. Okay. He was so, associated. They associated together. Okay. It's like you're so, being connected. Yeah, right, right. Well, and, and you know, the thing about that is with my dad, we talked about it. You know, he was raised with those guys, friends with them, right? He goes and, you know, he goes in the, in the car business and they stay as their friend. My dad's a loyal guy. They buy cars, right? So listen, Sally D came there, uh, Don Angelini. Don Angelini's son is my, is my son's godfather. Nobody knows. Yeah, the, the lawyer. It's my son's godfather. His father was a great guy. I told you, okay, get back in the restaurant business. Okay. So, El Mio had it for a couple of years. My dad said, screw this. He's struggling, barely making it. He said, let's, I'm going to sell it. And he sold the Silverados and they're still there 30 something years, you know, to Silverados. What was that? 
Who's Cynthia that? says, Cynthia. Oh, hi, Cynthia. I'll tell you one thing. You got good looking people on the show. You know, people, the listeners, I'm telling you. You know, you must have been a male model, right? Right. You got all these nice good looking people. See, when the host is good looking like you are, that's what happens. You get them all. <laughs> you know, I call you the professor. So let's get back to the restaurant. So now, now he gets um, El Mio moves out, right? He sells it to Silverado's. And well, and then then he goes and then he got out of the restaurant business. I owned a couple sports bars. Well, I was opening up a bar in Hillside, not Hillside, Berkeley, and I was I had one already. This is not Shake Rail and Roll. This ain't the 50, 60 stuff. It's uh it's a sports bar. So I don't know if I told you. The guy goes to the police station to let them know that I'm coming in, right? Add me on. And the cop goes, Listen, let me tell you do yourself a favor. You don't want him in there. He goes, what do you mean? You'll bring your heat will be. Oh, guys will be there. Wise guys. You're going to have heat on it. FBI. He's just going to bring a lot of baggage. That's horrible, right? He's a guy like, what do you mean? His father's a car dealer. Yes, but there's going to be a lot of heat on him. I go, wow. See? See? And that's because of why. You hang with them people in restaurants. You got Michael Splatter coming to my bar. Although I did buy my diamonds from them. Them too. You know, I did do that. <laughs> I mean, I was sitting with him, right? So I guess, you know, but I was a young kid. But I'm, I'm laughing because, you know, when I think about relationships, and all your listeners probably know a wise guy or associate, you know, to a degree, and as you and I talked about, you know, yeah, they talk about this shit with they know they know you. You know, if they know you like they knew you, they're going to say, they say stuff, but they're not going to like, you know, nothing like uh, New York was, you know, nothing like them. And, um, uh, so, you know, when you, when you look at that, in my case, it was always about that. No different than that girl I was banging. I can say bang on there, can't I? Yeah, this girl I was banging yeah. years ago. Years ago, I was getting divorced, right? First of all, my wife thinks I'm cheating, right? She gets a detective. I hear about this a year later. Gets a detective, get, or a private eye, gives him $500, right? Three days later, he comes back, gives her money back. He says, I don't want no part of him. He's got enough problems. He goes, what do you mean? Ah, uh, just divorce him. He didn't want to, he, he didn't want to like, no, what does that mean? So this girl, this is the same thing. I'm banging this blonde. She's hot. I'm about 44 years old. And she comes home drunk and tells her husband, hope she's not listening because she'll know it's her. <laughs> tells her husband, right? He, she says, she goes, he goes, where have you been going lately? She goes, oh no, you're, you're cheating on me. He goes, no, well, actually I am. We, we, yeah. And, I see Joe Salozzi. He goes, the car guy? Son, yeah. He said, we just have two kids. One's six. She told me she's getting divorced. Lie. Another lie, right? She's getting divorced. And I, and I, I stopped seeing her because she had a mole on her shoulder. I felt her. It was a mole. And I got, I got nervous with it. It was a black mole on top of her right shoulder. You know, I don't know. If, I just got, she didn't, she didn't tell me it was there before, you know. So I, she should have warned me, okay? It was just, was there. She'd be cut off. I offered a dermatologist pace. Somebody take it off, but it was it was it looked like I had hands and a head. It looked like it looked like it could talk to me. Anyways, she tells her husband, "Of course he wants, to, hey, of course he wants my he wants my ass, right? I don't blame him, right? So he's gonna get my ass kicked. This is probably two thousand and probably two thousand and three or whatever two thousand yeah two thousand two. So this is what she tells me. So three days later, she's home and whatever he comes back, he goes, you know. You, you still cheating with that guy, whatever, since whatever it was, we were ending it. And she goes, he goes, you know, I try to get that guy beat up. Goes, what? Well, yeah, I'm not gonna put up with that shit. And she goes, what do you mean? I went to a couple people to, you know, either go talk to him or give him a crack. You know, either way, either stay away from you. And if it was necessary to give him a beating, nobody wanted to touch him. They said, nah, they'll leave it alone. Two different people. And she goes, well, what does that mean? Uh, he's not really a nice guy. He's, he's got people. So now, do you see, like, here's a guy, whoever he went to, probably some peanut gallery guy, who knows, and <laughs> and, and wants to get my ass kicked, right? What, how, what, how bad is that, right? That's wrong. But he, he, he couldn't get me beat up. So there's a wealthy guy like, how can somebody become a, such as wealthy guy like a businessman who owns the chain of deal? How, wait, how can somebody become a wealthy guy like the businessman who owned the chain of dealerships. So that's like two questions, dad. right? Okay. Well, it, it, and I think I touched upon it last week, a little harder nowadays, but in our work. business, 
Yeah, well, in our business, listen, my dad loved what he was doing, loved it, and he got lucky too. So he loved what he was doing, and he was number he was number one at his, you know, number one salesman. Then what happens? They recognize you. Hey, you a manager somewhere. Hey, become a manager. Yourself. There you go. That's exactly right, Red. And he's a great promoter. Obviously, he was a great promoter as we can look at history. So guess what? Oh, yeah. yeah, Al, Al Pomani hires him. You know what, what Al Pomani did? Al Pomani called him one day. It's a true story. He says, I don't know you, ever met you, but every deal that comes out of that store you're at, that you're a salesman, you beat us. I want to meet you. He goes, what do you mean? He goes, I like it here. Meet me for lunch tomorrow. Meets El Pomani for lunch is at Glenbrook, uh, Glen, Glenview uh, Ford, up in Glen, Glenbrook Ford, okay, up north. He goes, he meets him next day. Now, at that time, my dad's probably making his early 60s, who knows, probably 35, 40 grand a year. Good, big money, right? Big money, selling cars. Now, he goes, I'm going to give you a used car manager's job. Now, he's a salesman because you could be a good manager. So my dad leaves, becomes a manager. So now because of his hard work, seven years as a salesman. So he'll be 64. He goes to a, a manager, right? Now he gets used cars over there. He blows it out, kills it. Right. Al goes, I'm going to promote you to sales manager. Right. All right. Now L lives in Elmhurst. My dad lives in Elmhurst. He's taking L every day, the two of them. All right. He gets in the car, puts on AM radio, and talks shop, El Pomani. He's the general manager slash percent owner there, and my dad's the sales manager, whatever. He said there's a place in Melrose Park that Ford wants to open up, a brand new point. What do you think? He says, Al, we live in Elmhurst. It's the next town over. We have to drive 45 minutes one way. Let's take it. He says, if we take it, he says, if we take it, you buy in 10%. Back then, it's 10 grand, whatever. So he buys 10%. And I think Maury Edelson bought 10 percent there in the office, right? So they, we opened up. It was a tent. I, or, or, I was there. It was a tent. Picture of me sitting at a desk, future uh, sales manager, me and my brother. And then picture of Maury with his son, future controller. Yeah, little, little kid. I was six years old, right? Well, then about two years later, maybe or a little over two years maury gets a call from fensel he said because they all worked for fensel fensel back in the early days there's a place at almost nobody wants it he said we can buy it and get nick salozzi and you and meet me downtown tomorrow so maury goes the old man he knows he, um fensel wants to talk to us the old man going oh please we're just here and if we leave we will get our money back from al It'll take us two years to get our money back, our, our deposit, right? Hell with that. But and listen, Al Pomani, you're limited, right there. You can only stay up ten percent. My dad could buy no more. You know that was it. He was he was there. Now, and he ran the store. Okay, he was he did what he wanted, right? Hundred percent. Al never said a word. So they go meet the guy on the boat, Fensel. He said, "Man, I don't have the money. Don't worry. We're, I'm, it's gonna be twenty five percent, twenty five percent, and you could buy me out in five years, you and Maury." I'll sign. Well, okay. Week later, they go to the bank and said, give them a hundred thousand. I'll sign and give them a hundred thousand. I'll sign. The guy guaranteed that my dad's, you know, his uh, down payment. So nobody wanted the store. And they, my dad, they were to get more or less of a, a percentage, but they stay 50, 50 and one handle the books. But then two years, they bought fence a lot. I don't think anybody knows this a year after they opened up, they could have Fensel Tufo on North Avenue. My dad says we call Slow Zettelson too. But my dad says, how can we do two stores? And then he put Dick Fensel's son in Waterford, Wisconsin, called Fensel Chevrolet. My dad backed him there and had a Buick Pontiac old store in St. Louis, partners there. And then Toyota, Jaguar, Saab, British Leyland, they were by themselves. That was early sales. They had like four or five stores then, you know. And uh, Fensel died of cancer. He died of cancer, and he said to my dad, he goes, um, um, don't buy me out these two years. Spread over the next nine years or ten years, my daughter, my wife. You know, I don't need it. And the old man said, uh, do you want a contract? He says, Nick, you're a man of your word. I don't need a contract. How about that? Pretty good, right? Yeah, so that's he handshake. trusted him. Yeah, handshake. It was a handshake. But I remember you know, Larry Maliphant that nobody knows, 
was Fensel's partner. Now, Larry Malafant, he had all the cleaning at the cemeteries, the, the graves. And guess who he sold? Guess what he, who he owned? What he owned? The Brooklyn Country Club. And guess who he sold it to? Jack Cerrone, Jr. Yeah. How did that come about, you know? Then Jack sold the pub to the uh, uh, Park District. But that's where that's why um, Ricardo, Magnifique, they, they golf there because it was their club. It was Jack's club, it was his son's club. But make a long story short, that's how he got started. But nowadays, to get started in our business, you need a backer, number one. And then number two, it, it takes a lot of money. You need four or five million cash and and obviously certified in the business, you know. That that's probably lucky if you get there. And like I said, the other podcast, right? There's not too many young guys uh, buying them. You know, the auto groups are buying it. I don't know if I told you, listeners, back in 1991 or two. Remember Auto Nations? They came and bought all the dealers. Auto Nations, oh, yeah. I think, uh, if anybody knows this, in the United States, Auto Nations bought the top 200 dealerships in the United States, each state, top Ford, top Chevy. They came to my dad. His name is Jackson out of Florida. And they bought Woodfield Ford. They bought Woodfield Chevrolet, Gleason Ford, Scotty Pippen Dodge. They bought a bunch of stuff, right? Look at that. Me too. Tracy. Look at that. Yeah. So God bless you, they, offered, they offered my dad and Maury in night, uh, for both stores, Cadillac and Chevy, property everything, $30 million. My dad turned it down. He said, what am I going to do? It? What, what am I going to do with myself? I'm 60 years old. You know, what am I going to do? Maury goes, well, who cares what to do? With that kind of money, we don't We don't need to. He turned it down. <laughs> and, and and guess what? Auto Nations went bankrupt three, four years later. So they bought all the stores, paid cash, and they ran like McDonald's, like a like a like a district manager. <clears throat> yeah, they paid they paid 10 million for Gleason Ford. It was worth two million. It, it was half was cash and half was in stock, right? It, it was ridiculous what they paid. They went through I don't know how many billions. A dollars and they closed the automation used car lots like CarMax, right? They all went under back then. So it never worked. Not that we would have got our money, of course, but it, it didn't work. So I, I think in my dad's case, because of the uh, cars, he had a partner that was watching the money. And he was a great, as I said before, the best, the best guy you'll ever want because he's watching his money while he's watching your money, right? How about that, Red? That's the way and, to do it. And Maury didn't mind the wise guys. You know, they come in. He, he knew they were. They come in because they paid. You know, they, they paid. There's no kinky shit. They paid. And they were very nice to him. A lot of them have businesses already, right? Bowling alleys, liquor stores. They had real estate. Co the best one is real estate company. Construction, right? What's this construction business? They're all construction or videos, video games. So, you know, and they, and they never asked for anything like, like, like they paid. They didn't really like owe money to you. They fixed their car. They paid for it. If they ordered tires, they paid for it. You know, they weren't looking to pull something over you, you know, so he liked that the business. Right. But, and I remember like Don Angeli, the wizard, Joe speaks it to Thanks. That's very true. Thank you. I like this guy. You know, you talk about Angelini, right? The wizard. I knew him very well. His son is my son's godfather, Donald. Great guy. If anybody knows Phil, his brother worked for the state's attorney in DuPage County. You heard about it happen? After four years, they had a meeting with him said, you can't work for us because you're dead. Can you believe that? That's horrible. I can believe it. <laughs> when, 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 did he, when did he figure it out, right? It was like the old man went, went on the boat, right? And he had cancer, and they finally realized he's on the blacklist. They told me he couldn't come in. He's been going there for years. If all of a sudden he decided, oh, yeah, who you are, right? So... I'll tell you what happened. So now, you know, that is true about the wizard, about his intelligent level. I don't know if you knew that, uh, Red. Um, he was brilliant. Guy was brilliant. I mean, my opinion on him, I've talked to him, an intelligent human being. That's what I like him. Me. And what's that? Let me tell you what That's happened. What they told me. They so told me he was he says, really intelligent. Well, intelligent. I knew him personally, and he, and he was he, Listen, he was a gentleman. Do you remember what they said to him when he uh, pleaded guilty? They said, why did you plead guilty, Don? He said, why? Because I'm guilty. Remember that? Coming out of court? He goes, because he goes, I'm guilty. 
But not even that. He was a soft-spoken man. You know, he was half Italian. You know that, right? That's what I think his, his, his mother was Irish. Right, Red? I think his mother was Irish. I don't know. I really don't. I think. There were a lot of Irish and Italian that were together. And they, it was a yeah. good match. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We don't. Look at look at the actor Ray Liotta. He's half Irish, half Italian. You know, I knew his cousin Liotta. He had a pizza place in North Carolina, right? That was his cousin called Liotta's. Liotta's. He goes, yeah, my cousin. I see pizza Ray Liotta. I go, that's your cousin. Yeah, he's, he has got a drug problem, big drug problem. Does a lot of coke. The guy's telling me, who tells about their cousin? Big mouth. New York, you know. Oh, and I'm and I'm uh, just like Tony, just like James Gandolfini. Uh, from Sopranos, he had a he had a bad coke and alcohol problem on the set, so they they had a they had to clean him out a couple of times. The Sopranos, I heard that in the background. God rest his soul too. But and it came out in the divorce. Remember, the wife said that he had a bad drug problem. You know, he had the heart attack in Italy in the bathroom of the probably he was doing coke for all. Who knows? Guy had a massive heart attack. But listen, so to get back to Angelini, listen, this guy here when I came home. He got me set up at the halfway house. I had the uh, the Salazar, the lady. I was home in a week. I got all my paperwork signed. They took care of me. He did, right? Took care of me like like um, like uh, like nobody. So about a week later, I go to Gennady's, right on a Monday. I'm still at the halfway house, half you know working. He's there at the front desk, Donald, and he says, "Legend." He called me Legend. Legend. What's going on? And like the waitress comes up to me. She says, there's no more charges for you. What do you mean? Your dad said, you know, no more house charges. I just got out. He goes, what do you mean? I can't sign. You're, yeah, you can't sign. I feel bad. I go, wow, he said that, huh? Yeah. Now, Angelini's listening. He goes, legend, follow me. I think I said this. He comes, dials the number. He says, uh, with Nick Salozzi, Nick, how you doing, Don? He goes, I got your son here. Yeah, you know, no more charging. He goes, that's okay, Nick. I'll pick up his check every time. Why? That's okay. I'll take care of it. All right, Don, put him back on a sign. <laughs> no problem. Well, he hangs up the phone. He says, I read your whole case, Don said. Because I gave his son was part of my attorney. He gave his, he asked me. I gave him the whole case. He read the whole thing from start to finish. He said, you took the fall for everybody. He said it. He says, you're buying your steak dinner. And that was just, I think, the guy. I mean, I could have signed. But, you know, that's, so he said that to me. I thought that was nice of him. You know, for him saying that, you know, it was nice. I mean, they wanted to wire me up, go go get all the bad guys. Where am I going to hide? I just got married. Where am I hiding? Right with kids? And I said, what did I do? You know what? Just tell Joe to tell the truth. Like, what am I going to do? I'm, you know, I, that wasn't mentally. Nah. I, here, here. I had to sign an extension. And I get all sound redundant here. But I had to sign an extension for six months so they can indict me. And again, if I, if I had my head on straight back then, but when they're coming in, Left and right. I mean, the bastards. Here, I had I had real estate downtown. I had a, a, a condo in Lake Point Towers, right? It was right during this. And I get a call from the realtor. He says, I got somebody who wants to buy your place, but they want to take $50,000 off the top. So the place is worth two fifty. dollars We'll show them two hundred grand, and they'll give you 50000 cash, right? But you don't, they don't want you to, you know, declare it. Underneath the so table. My, well, listen, yeah. Well, listen, that's too smart for that. So I, I talked to my accountant, great guy, ex IRS agent, right? So when he was younger, I mean, they went through seven years, criminal division, found nothing. And he goes, go ahead, let's take it. I'll take that 50,000 the next morning, put it right in the bank, your social security number, the whole thing. Why not? He goes, so we tell him we can't do it, but they don't think we're going to do it. Well, we have a problem. So we take the sale. He takes the, 50, the exact cash and puts it right all at one time and puts a form. And now we're back to 250, right? And they never called me. So so obviously it was them. Because if it was if it was what they said was Miss Illinois or Miss Whatever it was, we never met her. It was all lawyers. And guess what? If if it, if it was a legit person, they would have called. You know, you what happened, you guys? You're supposed to hide it, and then you you you, you sent it in, right? So obviously it was the, it was the G, obviously. Because you know. They, you know, they, they, they try to do that stuff. And well, Jesus Christ, my, my rear end was opened up like a Mack truck. I couldn't even like, you know, I was just, I was, I was off. I told you, 
I'm watching the 10 o'clock news, and there I am. I'm at I'm at four, five, and ten. Every station, AM radio, every paper. It was like, and I'm in my bar, and they, and they say Joe Slozy, and the guy's next to me. I go, man, that guy's fucked. He doesn't know it's me, <laughs> right? He goes, he goes, look at me. He goes, yeah, that, that's that dealer. That's a big dealer's son. I go, yeah, it looks like he's. They said hundred years, and three million dollars. I go, boy, I don't want to wish I wasn't him. You know, he didn't. The guy didn't figure out it was me sitting next to him. You know, and I'm and I'm saying to myself, look at this. But the way it looked, and it, it was all publicity for nothing, as we talked about. It was all zero. I mean, they wasted all that time. But as you know, Red, when they start the investigation, they get it approved, right? They go oh, yeah. through all the. They get approved. They get a, they get a budget. What we spend? Who's ever told them? They want to make sure it's legit. They send seven or nine agents from Washington, put them in apartments. They had a think area, industrial park with the desk. You, know, you see you see them in the, on, on cable where they have a face, my picture on top, and all the other, you know, around how everybody, and they talked to everybody. It's, it's, it was like a puzzle, right? They had the president of the union right here, the forklift, the me, my dad. Then they had uh, Yupa's guy here, and then this guy here, and the union people, the assistant, the, the forklift union. So it looked like, oh, this is a big thing here, right? And I probably didn't know 99% of the guys I didn't know. You know. But if you didn't know better, you would think, you know, and as I told you what happened, they they came in and tried this and that. But that was a, a, an eye-opener. But getting back to that incident, when I came home, it was nice because it was good. And I I did a favor for one of the, the guys from Sally D's group, uh, guys, from that crew. He says, can you can you put this guy, he's at the Salvation Army now, he's a bank robber. He got five years robbing banks. He had a drug problem. So I met the guy, big guy. I spent 15 minutes with him. This guy would be good at service, service writer. No experience. He drove a truck and he robbed banks. Of course, I want to hear how he robbed them. Like, how do you do it with a note? Do you put a mask on? You know, you watch all those programs. So now I'm talking to like a real person. I was wanting to hear how, how do you get the balls for that? Like, what, what don't you worry about the, the paint on the money or the button they press, right? So, I asked him all these questions, like, you know, like I was interested in, you know, in the, and, you know, he just says, listen, I was on drugs and, and guess who put him, guess who put him in? His girlfriend. Uh, honestly, Chicago accent faded since sports and park discipline. Uh, many kids. Uh, He's saying, Matt, Matt is saying that uh, the young people today don't have the Chicago accent. Do I have it? Yeah, probably. It came from your dad to you. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, people say I'm from New York too. You know, down south is over New York. That's nice. Yeah, it's, uh, well, so, so. Um, how are you gonna? Right, so, how are you gonna call your dad? How are you gonna call your dad when you're on the phone here, talking to me? Hold on, I got a phone on the phone. I'm gonna put on my speakerphone in a minute. Okay. So. So. So here's what happened. So now I get this bank robber. I give him a job, right? Pay for his training. And I told him, Red, I said, you're going to, you know, you're a really good guy, quality guy. Now we make our first Christmas party. He's thanking me. He actually cried. It said, you get, you have faith in me. Bank robbers can't get jobs, can't get a shirt. He goes, you gave me the opportunity. And, and I said, well, you blew it out of water. He was, someday you'll be a service manager. He had the quality, caring. He learned fast. Well, about two years into the job, one of my rats tell me, hey, he's leaving you. He got offered a job. I go, what? He goes, yeah, he's going to give you his notice Friday. I go, oh, my God. Every one of these motherfuckers. So now he listen to this, Red. I, it took me, it took everything in my soul not to say nothing. Wait till Friday. Now, I knew I wasn't supposed to say anything, right? So he comes to my office with his head down. And I said, before you start, tearing right now or tell me you're leaving me he goes well, who told you and I, but I want to give my two week notice I said forget that after you leave this room you're out you're done so let's get that out of the way I said this ain't fucking romance here I said I warned you this was going to happen nobody's going to give you the manager's job they promised you me well yeah but no they said within four weeks I said dude they're stealing you from me I promise you it's not going to happen and I gave you all the training and the opportunity and your white girlfriend, the new girlfriend and your family said, 
I heard all that bullshit from you because it's bullshit now, right? It doesn't mean anything now. He said, oh, I'm so sorry. You know, I have to better myself. I said, I told you I'd get you manager's job down the line. You're really not ready yet. You know, you got skills, day-to-day stuff, but managing people, that's a whole different ball game. You got more street in you than, you know, than class, right? You know, you want to blow everybody out the first day. So I said, uh, it's not going to work out. When it doesn't work out in about the third or fourth month, you don't have a job ever here again. I said, don't, don't try to call me. I said, now get out. He goes, that's how we ended. I want to shake your hand. Get out. I said, it's embarrassing. I did all, took all the work. Well, you, you, took, you, took him, you took him from the halfway house. You give him a break. Yeah. You teach him a trade and he's going someplace else now. That's exactly right. At the halfway house. But did you realize how many times, well, Christmas and some, that they cried, they hugged me, his, his family thanking me. It was almost, I felt embarrassed. I said, no, no, no. So it doesn't matter what you do in the, in the 5000 I spent on training and everything and, and getting a lot of shit from other people. How could you hire a guy with no experience? Right? <laughs> I'm going to train him. Right? And, and, and guess what? He calls me four months. because I know you told me not to call you. Uh, it didn't work out. I'm going to go back to driving a truck. I said, see, you wasted it. He goes, you're right. He goes, it took, it took me forever. It took forever to, for, to call me. He said, I, it was a month ago. I left. I go, I said, I'm sorry. I keep my word. No, the job, well, I moved on. And I said, you're, I said, the good thing about this situation, it really makes sense now about people. I said, this situation, you, really makes me open my eyes with people. Of all people I hired, 500,000 people. As you know, I hired wise guys, kids, and uh, chief of police's sons, and even, even a, a Bible, a Bible guy, you know. All that shit. A magician. I heard every walk of life, right? I heard every story, and I've been, you know, praised. <laughs> you know, I, it was this. We hired a guy first day. Now, I'm in the truck department. I don't even know the guy. He tells one of the salesmen. He goes, yeah, slows his son over there. This is 1985, 86. He goes, does he do drugs? What? The guy comes and tells me. I walk over there. I said, hey, you're fired. What do you mean? You're asking questions about, I don't even know you. He looked at the other guy. I go, get out. He asked him, what if I do? See, a troublemaker. What was he asking? First day in both of one, if the kid does drugs. You know, that's, that's, and again, I hung around people that did those things or a business where back in the day, it didn't do me no good because you can't be seen with them. They don't know who they are, but they know who I am. And maybe one person. So it's, it's true about you're as good as your friends, who you hang with. That's why I hang with you now, Red. See, I, my reputation went up with you. See, once you and I started, I hit the ball. I hit, I hit the. I hit a winner, home run with you. Trust me, it's it's the it's Red and the wise guy, you know. And and you know the one thing I could say about myself, you sort of know me now. I never ever said I was anybody like a wise guy. You know, I always said no. Well, people said no. Well, not you know no. I would never say that stuff like this guy. And and nobody ever really that knew me knew the truth, right? Yeah, okay, sure. I go out to dinner with them. Sure, all that. But that doesn't mean anything. In New York, they're worse than Chicago. Those motherfuckers. I, I met the guy that was that got Billy Joe started, John Ambrasia in New York. He got him when he was nobody. Tell me how Billy Joe sent him a bottle of champagne. He said, I didn't take it because he disowned me. Here's the wise guy got Billy Joe started back early in his career. And he, I guess he popped him or whatever. And I, I liked this. I loved him uh, when I was with him. You know, the game with me was, you know, you know, story with the, when I had to go to my um, counselor, tell my dad would fly me out on a private jet, remember? And he goes, who the fuck do you think you're a John guy? Remember? Yeah. So then they laughed. You know, little, little me had the bald head boot camp. So, you know, it's like, Back, I guess there, there was a while, for a while, it was cool to hang around those guys. Sure. I think in the 80s, 70s, if you were friends with them, you thought you were a wise guy. That was the biggest misconception that I think we talked about associates. Like, I'm sure half your listeners know wise guys or, or, or family or, or whatever. And I think at one time, people liked that. It was like, oh, 
I'm a, I know this guy. He's a you know he's part of you know. And what, really, they don't know. I, I hear think it he's all with, the time. I hear it all the time. Even yeah. on the show. All right. I got I got a, a couple of messages from different people. They said, "Oh, yeah. my father was this, or my my grandfather, or this, and then that, and then they knew so and so, and they were with so and so." Just before right. we went on the air, I was looking on Facebook. I forget what the guy's yeah. name yeah. is. He sent me an article. Yeah. And he said my dad was named in this article, and his dad was named as a possible suspect in the murder of Alan Dorfman with Frank Schweiss. And he said, "What can you tell me about it?" And I said, "You sent me the article. <laughs> what do you want me to tell you yeah. about?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I I think the biggest misconception you heard is you got the crews. Right? It's, it's the money that you're getting from whoever's in his crew, if they're on a restaurant or or, or a bookmaker, those people that they're muscling have a tendency to be like, oh, they're connected because they're paying. If they're Italian, oh, they're part of the organization. In reality, they're getting muscle. They're getting their cheeks spread. That's what they're getting every month. You know, that's nothing. That's not to brag about, you know. I didn't, I, I, I didn't like no, no, I didn't no. do that because I made a deal in the very beginning. We were partners. Oh, that's different. In the very that's beginning, I, I asked for permission. I said, I want to open this up and I don't want to have no problems. So then that's smart. Marshall came in with me. Marshall Cifano came in with me. Uh, unlike what I did. Unlike what I did. <laughs> I had the guy's machines in there, threw them out. Something I, I probably should have done my research who had that area, right? I, I didn't even think of that, you know? And, and, and I look back at it now, you know, that was well, too smart. It wasn't an area because if you were with somebody, it didn't matter That's where right. you went. I could go anywhere in the city. Any, I could go out of state, and I'm still with that guy. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. You know, I never looked at it that way. Then who would I be with, then, do you think? With all the people I know. Would I be with Cicero Crew, with Grand Avenue? Would I be with who? Nobody, really, probably. Whoever you're going to go talk to. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess. Well, Ayupa, you know, Orlando's guy. Orlando, that fat old man. You know, probably him. But like he was like you, he can go anywhere. He used to tell me, "Look, Joe, look, I can." He'd be like this. He'd be, "Look, Joe, go anywhere. I can go anywhere." You know what he had? He had a hundred thousand on the street, and he told me he was getting a week at a hundred. And I told you, I told you three, four weeks ago, uh, what he did. He went to people's birthday parties, the christenings, took the checks and took the cash out of the uh, boost. Not even that. If it was big money, he would take their property. That's a. Mo I told you, he had in nineteen fifty six. A guy with a five thousand dollars in Wheaton, unincorporated Wheaton, 1956, five grand. He got 72 vacant lots for five grand. Now fast forwarded to 86. So 66, uh, yeah, 30 years later, I buy 25 of them from him and I'm buying a bunch more. And he had 70, yeah, he had all that for for he was the guy with the money. So that's what they did. He would take people's assets, a car, a tractor a doghouse, whatever it was he would take, you know, whatever it took, whatever, it took, he would take, you know, he, and, and again, he used to say, I don't get violent with people. I don't get violent with people, but I did know that the Calabrese crew, you didn't do that. You got money from them. <laughs> there was no taking properties there. You got a beating for the first time. That's what I heard. Hey, dude, I, I didn't even know these people. That was in the early eighties. I heard that I from guys. There was a couple of cases, a couple of cases, uh, cases where, Frank Senior, Frank Calabrese Senior, went and yeah. they took a uh, mortgage or they lean, took a lien on their house, their home. For Frank sure, yeah. Took a lien on the property, went to Chicago Title and Trust to record it. Oh yeah, for sure. That that's for sure. That that, that that's yeah. You know the the smart ones do that right because if there's ever a problem, they could say, wait a minute, I put a lien. Why would I muscle the guy for money here? I put a lien against his property. I did the right thing. I mean, in the court. If they came to him and says, are you bothering this guy? I took a lien against his property. I borrowed him money, right? I've been away a while. Yeah. Oh, this guy. What's up with Adam? What's up with Did Adam? You... Well, Adam? Adam's been real busy lately. Um, before you were here, Rick, um, he um, sent a message in here. And he said, I've been busy. And uh, he said, I'm, I'm out doing the tours. And uh, God bless you all. And that was it. I'm gonna get my other phone. I get my other phone in a minute, and we're gonna to talk to my dad. But you know, the the getting back to you know stories and wise guys, and 
yeah, you know, in my case, it did me no good because it just didn't in the end. You know, it just, yes, it works. Probably better. It worked better, you know, like in the in the 60s. Now, I, told, I don't know if I told you a story that Sam told my dad that he could use his name, right? He said, uh, at the end, we said, you know, do you know who I am? He said, no, I don't. He said, uh, if you need to, you can use my name. And then I told him, I might, I might have said this. I don't think so. I told you at the Ford's um, Ward Banquet Hall, there was a thousand guys. My dad's getting a ward. He got a T-Bird from Ford, $3,300 for the car. And my dad sold it to the owner of the dealership. He got it for the number one Ford salesman, 467 cars in one year. Right? So it's a big thing. All the top, all the top salesmen. So there's a guy behind him drunk and he's swearing. My dad doesn't swear. He doesn't yell. He, he's a pretty calm guy. He doesn't have to use language like that. So my dad turns around. He said, sir, now my dad's in a tuxedo or in some kind of, yeah, a, a, a jacket back then. He said, sir, there's women here. Please don't use that language. My wife is right here. 15 minutes later, he turns around and he's swearing right at my dad, like, like, like talking, like, you don't fucking talk to me, like whatever. So all of a sudden the guy takes the bottle of wine and hit my dad over the head. Was going to, you know, Nick, turn around. And my dad turned around. And of course, you know, my dad was a boxer, golden gloves. Boom, boom, boom. Hit the guy three, four times. Right. Now Are the cops come. Looking for a soft spot on his head? Looking yeah, for whatever. a soft spot on his head? Probably, probably. And, and my dad was tough. And you know what he did? Now they're walking him out. The police came. This is dinner, right before dinner starts. They're walking my dad out in handcuffs. And they're in the lobby waiting for the elevator or whatever. And my dad tells the one guy, he said, where's your supervisor? He says, he's over here. Get him over here. He said, you know that, that woman there? Which one there? It's my wife, yeah? Her uncle's Mo Mooney Giancana. He goes, what? What? He goes, yeah. Hold on. Another guy comes. They huddle, right? Now, the other guy's handcuffed over in the corner. He goes, yeah. your, your, uncle's, your uncle's Mooney? Sam? He goes, yeah. Cigars. He goes, holy shit. So, he, they, they, they take his handcuffs off. They each give him a business card. Tell your uncle he took care of you. He says, turn around, don't look, and walk back in. Now, the guy's going, what the hell's going on here? They beat the guy up with the billy club. You know what that was? And they're dragging him in the elevator. Took him away. It's pretty good cloud, huh? You know, back then. So, oh, yeah. it, you, know, you know, so that was nice. And my dad would never, ever try to um, you know, use it. He said that one night they were at Shea Paul downtown. Figueroa, Bobby Figueroa, John's brother, my mother, my dad, the four of them. Back then, the bill was 100 bucks, probably 150 bucks back then, 58, 59. And my mother goes, now Sam's there. I want to thank my uncle. The check comes, no, no check. So, okay, my dad and her walk to the side hallway there, and a guy pressed a button, and the room opened. And, like this, like a panel just kept moving. And there was 10 guys, there's a cigar room, it's all cigars, and Mooney's there with everybody, all men. And my mother walked up to him, thanked him, gave him a hug and kiss, appreciate the dinner. My dad shook his hand, and he left. That was at Shea Paul. They had a private room there. He was in the room. Oh, yeah. yeah, and my dad said it was weird, because it wasn't even an office. It was it was a, a room that was tucked was away like somewhere. Smoking room, they played cards back there. Was that what it was? Yeah, you know. So it, it's like a um, it's it's uh back then. But I, I joked about it here before on her. What did I always tell you, I said, Dad, you had to like that back in the fifties, right? Italian guy neighborhood, right? You marry Mooney. That's like ten years ago marrying the niece of Escobar, right? Out here, you know, cartel. Escobar was the biggest. If if a guy married the 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 niece of Escobar, like holy shit. And you go to the guy's house, man, that was basically like that back then, you know, that well-known. And, you know, that's got to be pretty cool, I would think. It, it would be pretty cool, but also very dangerous because you can't, you know. I know one thing, uh, Sam's sister, my grandmother, came to dinner every Sunday with us for years until after he died. I remember the weekend that Mooney passed, uh, my dad goes, we have to have your mother here for dinner. <laughs> we would go out to dinner, and my grandma Fraggy would come every Sunday. I don't know. You know, my dad, when, I don't know if it was because of that, but once he died, I remember my dad saying, to him, does your mother have to come again? He never said that before. I, I remember that too. And she babysat. She she was funny. She was hard, my, my grandmother. Nice, I love her. Nice lady, uh, but hard. She looked like Sam. They all looked the same. You know, they had that. I told you, back in the day, I don't know if you guys, 
all her, my mother's aunts, they used to hug me, right? They had the big bazooms, right? I couldn't breathe, right? Yeah. I would, they would pick me up, come here, you little bastard, and they would hug me. My head would be stuck between two bazookas. I was choking when <laughs> these breasts right there, I couldn't, oh, look at Joe, he's so cute. And I, I was like, help me, help me. And, and, and it was, they were choking me. I think those old women did it purposely. I swear to God. Because they were pulling right between their breasts. They do. Was that, you think so? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I remember. Because we used to go over by uh, um, Vito, Benedetto, that's oh, Mooney's brother. Hey, such a nice boy. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but my, head, my head always landed right between the bazooms. And then they would, they would bring you closer. I swear to God, I was choking one day. I said, help me. What's wrong? What's wrong? She kept me in there. She's kissed me on the top of the forehead, right? Yeah. She wedged me down in there. I said, that's why I hate big breasts. Ever since then, I'm not a breast guy. I, I, I promise you it ruined me. It ruined me. I, that's why I think I that's why I think I had a G.I. Joe doll until I was six. So my mother threw it out. She my mother, I love God rest her, so she didn't believe in toys, right? We got socks and underwear and jackets. She didn't care. She gave a shit. So I had this G.I. Joe doll that I had for six years, five years. And I left, I laid it in the living room in, in a Kleenex box, like a little bed. You know, it's my little G.I. Joe. And I come out, I was gone. She threw it out. I told you, leave your toys on the floor. They go out. I go, that's cruel. That's wrong. You know, that's not right. You know, poor thing. That thing was worn out. But my mother, she's old. She's old Italian. She used to go to uh, Ruthie Elman, Harry's wife. This is back in the, I think it was her. She had her first Avenue in the basement. They had all the clothes, right? All the, you know, boost. I mean, I remember this little kid. I was like, I was, I was six years old, seven. And she would go in there in the basement and it was racks. Like it was a, like a clothing store with a light. Right. And Carol, take this home. Show Nick, show Nick this. Just take a show Nick that show Nick. that. I remember that. Right. Here's me. I get no toys and I'm watching her get clothes. Right. I got one pair of pants. So she goes, all right. So my dad come home for dinner. Nick, which one do you like this color? Oh, Carol, get both of them. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. And my, my sister and I were just talking about yesterday. Should you think going with her when you were young, you get something? You were a little chia pet. You didn't get nothing. I said, well, I ate at Wags. I had a hamburger. I got my lunch with her. Yeah, but you didn't get no toys. There was no nothing. You know? I said, yeah, I didn't get a bike till I was, what, I think four, um, eighth grade. Yeah, my dad worked. Give your dad but, a you know, call. He wasn't, what's that? Carol? Give your dad a call. Okay, hold on. All right, let me get let me get the uh, oh well right now. Hold on, Red. Maybe he'll answer. <laughs> no, what do you mean? Maybe he'll answer. Of course he'll answer it. You know, he's 92 years old, right? He's not a spring chicken. I know. But but when I didn't get a hold of you earlier, see if if you're not on exactly what he's he's like, you know this guy never waited for anybody. He won't even wait for. I told you, Red. I was waiting for you. I was in the when studio. He, yeah, Red, Red. I told you when he passes, he wants the money in his hands. You know that, Red. When he dies, he wants the money in, the in his hand when he lays in the casket. He does. That's what he said he wants. <laughs> We always see my money. He wants me to put the money in his hands. And that, you know, I said, that's crazy. But hold on. Okay. All right. Hold on, Uncle Red. Are you, are you, would you consider you're an uncle to me? Or what would you say? A cousin? Now that we're, you know, Italians, you were all cousins and, and uncles, right? Especially wise guys. That's my nephew. All right, hold on. Here we go. Hold on. Okay. All right. We'll call my dad now. Hello. All right. No, I got to find, Red. I got to find a publisher for his book. He wants to do a book on his life story. Really? Yeah. We got to find somebody. Hold on. Hold on. Dad, 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 I got Red on the phone. You're on, not live, but you're on audio on our podcast. So say hello to Red and all the people. Say. 
Yes. So, yeah. What's what's going on? There? Well, we were supposed to take remember today at four o'clock. I was supposed to come over. We were supposed to do a podcast, but Red got a hold of me late, and I know you didn't want to, you know, wait around and stuff. But I, I told them about your the life story. Somebody want to know how do you become successful in your business or in any business? What was your key thing? Well, I think I've always wanted to be the best. I mean, as I grew up, I always wanted to be that somebody, you know. And uh, so no matter what I got into, I tried to do the best I could in it, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because I did a lot of things, you know, and uh, I just kept working at it, and uh, especially selling. Uh, I always wanted to be the top salesman. And uh, so what I do, I worked extra hours. I took more time with people. Yeah. I... Uh, enjoy doing it that's the main thing and uh you know and you see it it just works for you because you continue to do it it's like somebody playing baseball and wants to be a good hitter so he works at it he tries harder every time he gets up to bat yeah, you know? yeah. that's, that's a person that's that's gonna move upwards because he's he's working at it yeah i was talking about your first month in the business what happened when they had a meeting about the new guy that came on the block it, what, what happened? Y'all sold everybody, and they were so pissed off. They had a special meeting. Uh, 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 well, what happened is, no, I, I was a salesman. I wanted to go to work for Jim Moran, Courtesy Motors. Okay. That was the number one Ford uh, Chevrolet uh, Ford dealership. Right. And so I went there on a Saturday. I was, of course, selling at Oak Park, but I went there on a Saturday. It was a good day to go. And I talked to the manager, and... Uh, he said, I don't need anybody. I got top people here and, uh, you know, and that's it. So I, I went back to my other place and then I said, you know, now when I'm going back, so next Saturday I go back. And, um, I said to him, I said, Mr. Benedetto, I said, if you hire me, I'll be your top salesman. What? Top salesman in this place? You know? Mm. And so he calls his, uh, other manager there. Vince, um, Tunzi. No, not Vince. Oh. No, Vince. No, Vince was manager at the other side. But oh. no, um, I got to think. But anyway, he says, "Tell him what you told me." I said, "I told Mr. Bennett that if he hired me, I'd be your top salesman." So the manager looked at Dick Bennett and he says, "Well, if he's telling you to be top man, why don't you hire him?" And uh, Bennett says, "All right, start tomorrow." So that was like the first of the month, and uh, so the whole month goes by, and. Uh, then I hear on the on the, uh, uh, on the system, all sales reports to the manager's office. So when they all go in, I'm the last one to get in there. I'm by the door, and, and he starts screaming, saying, "How can I hire a new man?" And he becomes a top salesman. He said, "And and you guys aren't working about it, and, you know." So after he screamed and yelled a lot, and then the meeting was over, and I was I'm still standing there. He said, "Well, what do you want?" I said, "I'd like to have a day off." He says, you mean you haven't been on? I said, no, I've worked all month. <laughs> <laughs> so he says, what day you want over? I said, I'll take Wednesdays. But uh, but I beat his top, his high Zussman was his top salesman all the time. And I beat him by one deal. Mm. Uh, I think it was 33 cars that month I sold. And, uh, well, what, from that point on, you know, in fact, that month, they, they, they tried to block the door so I wouldn't take up. So what I do is I used to stand by the door that you pass by, you park a car and you got to pass his door, which is a service entrance, and then to the showroom. And I used to open the door and say, are you coming to the showroom yet? Oh, come on this way. So I take my customers that way. And that's how I got hold of them. <laughs> because, if I, because if I stayed in the showroom, they'd block the door for me. I couldn't get it, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and then, uh, Mr. Slozy, Mr. Slozy, this is Red we met speaking. Yeah, this Red woman, that's Red, my, my co co host, Red. Yeah, yeah, Red. Yeah. And then I, the other, I, met you, I met you years ago. You wouldn't remember me, but I remember you. Hmm. Many, oh, well, many what, years ago, I met you. Where do I remember you from, Red? Maybe come to the dealership. Maybe the dealership. Oh. Yeah. I had a the problem with one of your salesmen. And and I came out and I saw you. You took care of it. Yeah, that's what he did. He did that. He had a problem on the salesman, and you took care of it, like you usually do, all your complaints. Oh, yeah. 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 I'm just trying to think. Uh, what was Red's name? Well, we met the last name, but that was probably was back when Joey you... Lombardo. I was with Joey, Joey Lombardo. Lombardo. Joey Lombardo. 
Oh, I remember that name, really. Why? Yeah, sure you do. <laughs> Yeah, you wouldn't remember me. I was a nobody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm laughing because I, you know we tell the story about you know like back when you married mom. You know the whole everybody knows the story, and yeah. and you didn't know he he didn't know who he's marrying. Tell tell Red. That's funny. Well, uh, no, I didn't know. Uh, I've heard the name, but you know, and then uh, one of my good friends that stuff from our wedding. He says, uh, "Nick, you realize who you're going out with?" I said, "Well, who?" Hmm. So when you're going out with Moody's niece, uh, uh, I said, oh, who's Moody? Oh, Moody, you know, I said, oh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I remember that. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, and then, uh, then of course, then I had to meet Moody, you know, you know, and uh, he, you know, he nice treated me very nice, no problem. Went to his house with my mother-in-law before I got married, you know. Yeah. And uh, we just talked real nice and everything, and, uh, you know, and uh, the wedding, and uh, he had his people there, and everybody's there, and it was a great wedding. And uh, you asked him to get him a job. He asked him what he do for a living. He goes, I sell cars, and right, and then he said, uh, "Give me a job, one of your clubs." What did he tell you then? Oh no, he said you need a job. I said, "Well, you got a nightclub on on Grange, on Manheim Road." I said, "I'd like to run it." <laughs> he, he said, "He said if I gave you, a, if I put you in charge of a nightclub," he said. Uh, um, uh, in two months you'd be divorced. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm telling you is not to be repeated, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> that was a long time ago, Dad. Seven, sixty years ago. I know, but I don't want to repeat it. All right. Well, anyways, it's it's fine. All right, Dad, I'll call you back uh, next week. He'll be able, uh, he'll get on the show. We got to try to make it earlier. All right, Dad. Say goodbye to everybody. <laughs> Okay, Red and everybody else. All right, Dale, good talking to you. And I'm sure we'll be talking more. All right. God bless you, sir. There we go. See? Yeah, he's getting old. Does he sound old, Red? 92. Yeah, that's – he doesn't – you know what I told you what he said? He looks in the mirror, and he says, I'm 92. Now, that's old. He goes, what am I – how many years do I got left? Really? I mean, really, how many years do I have left? You know, his mother lived in 94. <laughs> he never likes to talk about Sam because he feels like, you know, because you know what? I think because he, you know, being married to the niece, you know, in the 50s, all his Italian friends. Oh, Nick, Nick, Nick. You know, he didn't get a job with them. He didn't. You know, he offered him a job at the union, a projection. He didn't do that. He, you know, uh, he said he was a nice guy. He said, quiet guy. I mean, he, you know, he never, just a, Different. My grandmother was more like him. Mary. She looked like him too. Seriously. I mean, she she was <laughs> she was vicious, I think, my grandmother. I tell you, I was her favorite. For Grandma Faraji. Every time I used to take her out, she said, Can you cash a check for me? Twenty bucks. Of course I could never, you know, cash a check. Here I'm here, here's twenty, right? I could never. So, you know, I, every, once every couple of months, or whatever. So one time she says, Hey, can you cash a check? I said, Grandma, I have no cash on me. What do you mean you have no cash on you? She got mad at me. I go, Graham, I'm sorry. You, you take Visa, American Express? She said, that's not funny. So, yeah, she was mad that I couldn't cash the check for her. I said, I'm sorry, Graham, you know. So that was a little, maybe sad, you know. I felt like she was muscling me or something. Working me. I was paying juice to her. But outside of that, um, I was talking to my brother, Red. He, he wants to talk to you for first. And... Uh, He's uh, he'll come on, um, and you guys he'll do a question Maybe for everybody. You can set get on the actual screen. Yeah, God bless. Sounds like a man half his age. Now he cares, carries himself. I'm not quite half his age. <laughs> you must have been some character. You a mild man? Yeah. Well, yeah. From what everybody tells me. <laughs> well, my dad said back then, ready, fought. My dad said back in the day, they'd get a circle. If you had to fight, fair. The the winner, the loser would get up, shake his hand, and it was over. That's what they did. And that all the guys, cool. tell, all those guys tell me that your old man was tough. His sister told me, he said, nobody wanted to date me. Why? He goes, because your dad would tell him, hey, you bring her home the same way you take her, smiling. You got two hours. And they were like, you know, the old man fought. He was tough. That's why I want to be a boxer, right? He had that in his head. So he saw what they looked like. But, you know, the old man was all about, he didn't swear. He was self-taught in English, you know. His dad was very poor. 
family that worked hard. You know, you know the Italians. You have the one side of the Italians are hardworking, and the ten percent are the other side. And I told you, my grandma said, Grandma Slozy told me. She said, Joey, if I would have known that your dad back then was marrying, you know, that kind of thing, I probably would be wouldn't allow it. That's what she said. His mother, because obviously when that ha happened, she probably everybody's calling her, you know. Because remember, she, he married her right when he became the boss. Now, was he the underboss to, to Ricardo or what? Well, he was, he was the underboss for a while, right? Well, he's always the underboss. Ricardo was okay, the boss, but he was the – who was uh, – before? No, he was the street boss. He was the street okay. boss. He was okay, the street boss. boss. Well, when Rica – when was Rica around? Same time? Rica, Paul Rica? Same time. So there was – okay, so it was him and Rica, right? Well, he went to prison. He went to prison. Paul Rica went to prison. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. I never heard a bad thing about him, Rika. You know, you never even hear about him, that guy. You never really, you know, you hear about a Cardo, but Cardo's like the chairman of the board, you know. That's basically what Cardo was, chairman of the board, you know. And and I and I'm saying to myself, you know, back then, it's like, well, Red, you were you were sort of born back then, right? I mean, not really, but not you were born. You're like you were sort of around them. You were you were in the '60s, right? Yeah, '60s, '70s. Were, yeah, and you were in that business when it was when it was not good, right? Wasn't where you were at was the bad part of Chicago at one time? It was a CD place, right? It was. It was a very poor Italian neighborhood. St. Michael's was down the street. Okay, what is it now? All built up, probably. Oh yeah, yeah, it's really built up. Yeah, because my dad was raised at Kedzie in Lexington, right? He went to our, he went to the church there, and my mother West was. Side. West side. That's right. My mother's from probably Taylor Street. Where's Mooney? He was from Taylor Street, right? I think he was, yeah. Because my brother wants to call the movie The Patch. I guess well, legit. The Patch. The Patch was uh, originally the Patch was Grand and Ogden area. Oh, but they well, maybe that with Taylor Street later on. Yeah, because they are doing that movie about obviously they show, they put it on the side for for, um, um, for this movie, The Assassination. And it's all red stuff. It's all in line. Actually, uh, in a week or two, they can start Googling it. You'll hear Al Pacino being interviewed on it and Travolta, yeah, up on the on the whole thing. And now, would you believe this? I'm hearing on all these mobster talk shows. You know, I always, I always like to scope in, see what everybody's doing, right? Always, just for two minutes. I don't care if it's Sammy the Bull or, or Franchise or 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 Calibri, Any any of these guys, I always go on for a few minutes to see, or I see what's coming up. And now they're talking about the movie assassination. All of them. They will, you know, they they say, "What's what do you think about?" Very yeah, because about done about Chicago. Yeah. And I and I think it's a combination. It's, 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 listen, Red. It's it's David Mamet and it's Al Pacino, Travolta, and all those. That's what the biggest thing is. Everybody's like shocked. Like, see, Irishman wasn't big. It was big, but it was in COVID. Remember? And who Netflix did it? It didn't come to the movies, right? So it was sort of like, like you know, didn't have the exposure it had. And I don't think, honestly, I don't think the story was real. I don't think. Who, I mean, everybody knows that Hoffa was told to back off. Everybody knows that. But I, I don't know if it happened that way or whatever. But this here, I think, and as I said, in the last 30 years, everybody knows the truth. Yeah, everybody knows what happened. Everybody knows that, you know, Kennedy was uh, dismantling the CIA. Everybody knows that, you know, there was a theft for sure. Now, who's what? who did it? Everybody knows that. Um the guy said in uh, New Orleans, he said, told the lawyer, he said, we killed the wrong guy. You know, you, you shoot the you shoot the head and the tail dies, right? Well, that's what he meant by get, getting the president, then Bobby died, the tail. You know, the tail don't wag anymore. So that's what he meant. And um, because at his dying deathbed, he said to the attorney, and the attorney says, I'm going to be honest, at his deathbed, he says, you know, we killed the wrong guy. He said it. That was Marcellus, uh, that was his his uh, nephew was Ruby, you know. But see, as I said, that nobody knows that nowadays they would be able to get out and talk, you know, to other inmates. Back then, they shut Ruby up. 
You know, Oswald, he couldn't talk to anybody. He wanted Everybody to talk. Knows because they have one of these. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. And, you know, and now, now people should know, look at all the, the, the projects that our government has that's coming out now that's been kept secret. Okay, for national security and all that, probably not. Or for war, okay, whatever. They, they, they hide a lot of stuff. Okay? And there's a lot of stuff that goes on we don't know. Okay, our Constitution was not, we weren't supposed to be like that. We we're supposed to be transparent. We the people, for the people, right? We were supposed to be fiscal responsibility, taxation without representation, right? All the things that we become, Took three, it took 200, 300 years to catch up to England, but we are them now, if not worse. So my question is, does the democracy work? Sure, it can work. But when you have division like we are, you know, and why do we have it? Social media. There's ways to get their point across out, right, Red? You know, oh, yeah. I mean, I, if it wasn't for social media, I don't think I would know half the stuff. I was not into social media. I, I fought it up till about five years ago. It took me. 15 years my kids watched it i just thought it was for kids now i don't watch anything i don't watch the main news anymore 257 i hardly watch it now you know i, I watch the guy i don't have cable anymore i got rid of it actually i watched your bedtime stories and i thought they were interesting oh I, i'm from chicago you're from chicago sure. so i'm listening and i'm listening to you right and i know the same people i'm listening to, you know and the way you say it you know, it's, it is a bedtime story. If I had a stuffed animal, I would lay in my bed with it and listen to you. Because here you go. You, you sit in that recliner, and it made, it made me close my eyes. Because I'm ready, I feel, oh, I'm getting tired just watching you. And you talk, I, I mean, I thought that was a, that's a great catch, bedtime story. I mean, I thought whoever thought of that word, bedtime story, is brilliant. I thought of it. Because, I thought of it. Bedtime, yeah, yeah, I, I, I mean. Well, that's what I like about it. You know, I, did. I had nothing uh, to do that night. I had nothing to do that night. And I said, you know, I'm going to take the camera and I'm going to set it up on a tripod and I'm just going to sit down here and I'm going to tell a story. Yeah. And I did. Yeah. And I said, welcome to Red's Bedtime Stories. <laughs> I, you know, I was just thinking about it. I'm, I'm reading, I always read the comments. You know, there's always stuff written about me or commenting. Or my dad, well, through the internet, tons of stuff. I discover new stuff all the time. It's interesting, and I and I hear what they say, you know, and I and I, I can't help myself but to, to interject, comment, like you got it wrong, you know, it's not what it is, and it's not not necessarily bad, but not That's not good either. That's what comments are for. That's what comments are for to make a comment. Yeah, and then I come in there, and then they'll say, oh, somebody or straighten them out. You just make another comment. That's all. Yeah. I just didn't like, you know, like, I don't like people to go right to the hate, you know, when they hear something about, you know, the facts, like, why, why does it have to go to hate? Why do I have to be this, you know, because the good people are not going to talk. Good people are not going to comment. People that know you, they're like, you're not going to comment. Because what oh, they have I to comment. Like I get a lot of nice, you've been getting nice comments too. Yeah, here, here, I'm talking about outside of our platform, no, you know, no. other platforms here. You gave my dad. A year, year ago, I, I was watching. Somebody said, you got to watch uh, Red We Met. And Adam, they mentioned your dad. One of your callers called in, Slows Edelson Connected. And you said, yeah, okay. And then you mentioned you were there. And you said, very nice. My dad, the legend, gentleman. And and you said nice things. And they asked you, what I about the... He wasn't connected. I said he wasn't connected. Right. That's right. And they said, was he married to Giancana? And you said, through marriage. Through marriage. And they said, what about the son that was caught up in an FBI? You said, I don't follow that. I don't. I don't. I don't. Yeah. You said, I don't know about that. It's 30 years ago. I mean, you didn't say 30 years ago, but I don't know about that. It's been 30 years. But listen, when when this is good because for me, I got the truth out about it and it was fact, right? And people think all this stuff was going on, you know, and crazy stuff. I haven't watched t for years no cable no. yeah he's smart yeah, <laughs> scott, yeah scott. scott you joined the club <laughs> yeah well, hey listen listen i'm new at this you know so you know i was scared to say some stuff about people not scared but you know i i try to you know but i can't help myself but if i got something to say i'm gonna say that's my nature i'm gonna blast i'm gonna blast the way it is i'm not gonna lie 
and I may not say something, but I'm not going to, if I'm going to start it, I'm going to finish it. And um, I never, ever was a guy that was needed to be somebody, right? Most Italian young guys want to be wise guys back in the day, right? Or singers or boxers or landscapers, right? So landscapers, they tell the Italians, we'll get a job landscaping like the Mexicans now, right? What's that? Or they want to go out and steal. Steal, that's right. Hey, listen, I'm, I'm not a thief. Um, I'm not saying we all don't have large They yeah. poor neighborhoods. Yeah. They never that's right. anything. They never finish high school. That's right. So that's right. Go, yeah. You know, I'll tell you a story, not, not today, but about one of my relatives uh, got caught stealing on my dad's wallet. Yeah, it was 10 years. My dad was missing money on Saturday morning. Yeah. He blamed all of us. And then at the end, it was just him and my, and he, he caught the culprit. I'm going to say another time, it's probably bad. It's not bad, but it, it would get the biggest kick in the world, but it would make sense. And I don't know. I don't know if I probably shouldn't say it, but I'll, I'll, I'll ask a few relatives if it's okay. Everybody's passed on. So it's not like, you know, I'm saying something about, but it's, it, it's, it's brilliant. It's a brilliant story. It's one of the funniest stories probably I've ever. I tell that on, I tell it to people and they just can't believe it. they laugh their heads off. You know, it, it, it bothered my dad. Nah, it didn't really bother my dad, but it's, it was it, it, like it. your third cousin but, won't like it. I don't know about that. No, it's, it, uh, well, you know, I guess I should say it, you know what? Fuck it. I'll say it. You know, I'm my dad, was, yeah, my dad was missing money, right? In his wallet. Now on Friday nights, he went out with his friends. It was a money clip. And then, so every Saturday morning, he would look at his money clip and money be jammed in there, pushed in there, like rushed. Now, my dad's not like that. Now, maybe he's saying, I went out that night. Maybe I tipped too much. Who knows? This is from 1973 to 1984, 11 years, two different homes. So one, okay, on Saturdays, my mother would go get her hair done. She would do errands in the morning. The cleaning people would come at the house, right? And my grandmother would be at the house watching them. She would be there babysitting, making sure, you know. So one morning, my dad's in bed, and she comes walking in, his mother-in-law. Nick, get out of the bedroom. I got to make the bed. Well, that was normal. He would go in the kitchen and put his tea on and read the papers. That was his, that's what he did. Well, this Saturday was a little late, about 9.30. So she comes back in with her jacket still on. And first, Nick, the clean people are, are in the driveway. I got to make your bed. And he understood, okay. So he gets out, goes out, Give the boys. There you go. Thanks. So he goes in the kitchen. He says, you know what? The hell with this. I got to get to work. He goes in his bedroom, in his bathroom, and there's his mother-in-law back to her. She's in his wallet. And she has, he, she, he goes, hey, hey. She turns around, and she has three $1 bills in her, in her hand. Mooney's sister, right? And he goes, what are you doing? He, she says, I'm paying the cleaning people. He goes, first of all, it's $75. I leave an envelope on top of the thing over there. He said, put that down. He said, you've been stealing, you've been grabbing all these years. So, he, oh no, it's the first time. And he goes, I don't think so. So he tells me the story. He comes to work. He's paging me hysterically. Get it over here. Get over here. I thought, what would I do now? Right. So he tells me stories laughing. Now he took care of her. I mean, he gave her a G note maybe two months earlier, but she was clipping him. I said, well, she probably started with dollars, went to fives. Went to tens. That was easy. Never said a word. Ten years. Let's calculate this. If I had, now it's not every Saturday, but let's say at least two to three every month. Sometimes four. So let's figure she's up to three. So she's clipping at least seven a month. Um, the last two years. Let's just let's give that. Nah. Yeah. Okay. Then let's drop that in half. And so let's figure out. She's probably got you about forty dimes, right, over the years. And he goes, yeah. So she wasn't allowed at her house for a year, but my dad didn't care. You know, but I thought that was funny. Then we call it three finger Mary, you know, but she's grabbing. Now I'm sure a lot of guys have their mother-in-law stealing from them. You certainly got your wives clipping you, let alone your mother-in-law, you know, right. I mean, that's normal. I mean, would I be upset if I saw my, I'd be a little bit disturbed. Sure. If my mother-in-law was in my wallet, probably when she could ask me or ask her daughter, right. That probably would be like, that's ballsy in a way. But now remember now you're talking, at that time, there was what? Well, 25 years. They're married 60 years. So 10, 67. 
So they're married th almost 30 years, you know, 25 years at that time. So who knows? That's that's between my mother. Remember, I used to take my mother, my grandmother, um, to senior citizens, Fraji, every Wednesday, right? And it started out really nice. 20 bucks, 30. Got to be $100 every Wednesday. She's buying stuff for everybody. I would take her. And then she made me bring her to the Jewel, right? So I, I it was a snowstorm. I was, I was... I was I was tired. I didn't sleep. It was my day off, so I was out the night before. Now I'm waiting, waiting, waiting. I park the car in front of the Jewel. It's a snowstorm. I walk in there. I see her talking. It's backed up the line, and she's screaming loud, loud. And what's going on over here? The guy goes, "Oh, hi, Joe. You know they know us." And he goes, "This um, this item here doesn't go on her food stamps." And I go, "Food stamps? What are those? This is eighty three, eighty four. What do you mean food stamps?" Well, they're, they're back then they you, you tore them out. They're in a book, right? And I look at it, what are those? She goes, the guy goes, well, they're food stamps. I go, well, you get those? She says, yeah, twenty five dollars a month. I said, how? So, you know, it's old ladies. They get them. She qualified. I go, who got you those? He goes, your mother. I go, okay. I said, well, I, I'll pay for it. Here, twenty bucks. Here's twenty dollars. Let's go. And and I, and I said, explain to me how this works, right? She says, well, I get those every month. I go, a new ones? She says, yeah, but you only put certain foods on there. I go, and you use these? Like welfare? I didn't know back then, right? Yeah. And she goes, yeah. I go, your daughter had you on these? She says, yeah. I go, oh, it's going to stop. So the next day I get to the old man. I go, you know, you your mom was on food stamps. What are those? I go, they're food stamps. He goes, well, what does it mean? It means they get food on it, but certain foods. He goes, she's got those? I go, yeah. How do you know? I said, because she was trying to put something else on there and she was dad to get the manager and explain it, that hot, cold food, whatever. So I go, now, that's embarrassing. Now they, they have a new thing. They don't call it food stamps. They call it food stamps. But if you, if you read the card, it says public assistance. Yeah, I think it's, yeah. So, you know, I said to my dad, I go, dad, they can think it's your mother. The Salozis have their mother on food. Because what do you mean? They all know us. I go, by the time rumor hits it, that Elmer's jewel, oh, Nick Slozy, right? Of course they're going to say that. He goes, you're right. I go, that's a bad feel. Oh, Slozy got his mother on, you know. It's not true, but they're going to still change it up. He calls my mother on the phone. Carol, what's with food stamps? He goes, why are you asking? Well, Joey said he's with your mother yesterday. And she's using them. So? I go, well, Carol, she at the Jewel. They all know us. He doesn't want to take her. Just tell him not to take her. She was hard, my mom. I go, and I'm just on a speaker phone. I said, Mom, it's not that. Everybody knows us, right? Everybody knows us. They're going to think that that's dad's mother and he's got his mother on food stamps. That's not good. It's a bad, well, I would be pissed if that was me. If somebody uh, with a big name and has a mother on, that's that's horrible. You know? And she says, well, she qualifies for them. And I said, well, well it's not the money. I go, okay, I get it. But does she have to use it at, at that place? Can't she go to somewhere else? And then that was the last time I took her. That, that Wednesday, I didn't take her again, senior citizen discount. It was getting ridiculous. It cost me a buck forty. Back in the middle eighties. You know, I'm buying Christmas gifts for the other grandkids. I didn't mind it. I loved her. She was funny, right? I mean, she was a laugh. You know, I remember I was she 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 um watched us, you know. Like I remember the time back in the day, um, my dad comes home after a vacation. He calls me down in the basement. There's a freezer there, right? With all the Canadian back ribs, steaks. He goes, You guys ate pretty good last week. I go, No, we didn't. He goes, half the meat's gone. And I go, we didn't have it. He goes, oh, my God. The next day, there's a lock on the freezer. They, they were clipping it. They found I was clipping it back then. I go, he goes, Jesus Christ. Yeah. So he put it. I was young. You know, I didn't know. So he had all his meats and, and porterhouses and everything. Half were gone. We didn't even eat any of them. So they were going out the back door. Yeah. And, and I'm laughing because uh, I guess some people are just made like that, right? It's in your system. But I loved her. Oh, yeah. You know, and I'm sure, you know, I, I, I love her. Uh, God rest her soul. Um, she made me laugh. But it, it, after a year, she was back. And we were joking about it. I said, before every party at the house, I told everybody, put your purses away. Hide your money. You know, I don't think anybody, everybody laugh, you know. Three finger Mary. Yes. Okay. Snap. There you go. Thanks, Rick. Any questions anybody have today before I uh, leave my co-partner Red? Yes. Any questions? Do we miss anything? Yeah, you know, I love it here. 
How many people we have watching? Six? How, How many, many people? people? How many people in the room now? Can you tell us, folks? Yeah. Oh, you can't. Would you say 100? No. But I remember hey, folks, when I first listened you to you. Tell me, tell me how many people are in the room? Please? 67. I wonder if I got 67 bad. likes. <laughs> I, see, I see people watch it afterwards, up to 1,000, over 1,000 views once we're, once we're back. Oh, yeah. Oh, thanks, Scott. You know, somebody said I should be a. I think when I was in second grade, I was a kid that wanted to talk in front of everybody. They give give everybody a give everybody a a, a shot. I I want to you know you tell your story. I'd be up there telling the stories, you know. And I, it was a Catholic school. I'd be sweeping out the sweeping out the nuns. I remember Red. I remember I went to a grade school. Do you remember back when you were young? When you were back in kindergarten, they let you take a nap. Remember in the gym. For a half hour, you bring a little I towel. Remember, I remember. I remember. I went to. Um, I went to Haugen on the north side. Haugen. Yeah. Well, well, this is. I was six years old, and I had to go to the bathroom, right? And I was always raised my hand to go. So the one time I really had to go, I said, "Nope, you went twice already today. Lay down on your little mat or whatever I had <laughs> towel." Well, I shit. I shit my pants. Red. I did. I crapped in them. Oh, wow. I, I couldn't hold it. Thanks, Ricky. I shit my pants, so now my mother picks me up and smells in the car. This is two hours now. I got a load of me. Yeah, true story. I, I go to the dentist. From there, the dentist, Dr. Linick, and he's he's choking. I remember like it was yesterday. That bastard didn't use Novocaine either. He was sadistic, right? He was he'd drill without Novocaine. Yeah. I was I was I was like shaking. Well, anyways, I get home and Lula, the cleaning lady, she walks in on me. And starts screaming because she saw the crap hanging, right? All of my legs. She said, Miss Lozy, Miss Lozy. They come in and they're staring at me. What happened? I go, today at school, and I told the story. So the next day, she walks in with me. She said, here's diapers and extra pair of shorts in case he has an accident again. I go, this was no accident. I go, this is embarrassing. I said, I, she says, well, just in case. So I remember the next night dinner, and I, I was like yesterday. I said, Dad. I didn't have an accident, Dad. It, it was I was I couldn't go to the bathroom. I said I don't need diapers there, or an extra pair of underwear and shorts, like I'm some you know vegetable kid, like I'm slow, you know. What does it say? Good hearing you guys. Well, you're gonna hear it. I gotta get him on next week. I think he's mad at me too because I was supposed to call him too. Good hearing two. you guys. Good hearing you guys. Joe would. Um, uh, would like to yeah. hear more. Joe would like to hear more from your father. Well, you're gonna, yeah, for sure. That's gonna come. Yeah, I'm gonna try to get red. You know, this is all new to me. It's my fifth one. I love it. So now, you know, he talked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, he didn't want to mention about Mooney. You see, he was reluctant to say. Yeah, he's like, because he never, he never really liked that stuff like that. You know, he wasn't that. His mother kept him from the gangs. His mother sent him to Minnesota from from uh, seven years old all the way to high school from June to August. Sent him to Minnesota with her brother so he wouldn't be around the gangs. Yeah. So he got in high school, my dad. So although he still knew, Hi, grew Ron. up with everybody. Born Juan's listening uh, while he's driving on 290. <laughs> Juan, sure. You know, listen, you got the same people. You got the best people. I swear to God, you got the best people. You know, it's like... Um, I get excited. Now, Wednesday, we're going to come on and I'm going to try to get my brother on just for a, a small five minute. He said, give him two days. I got to call into him. I just want to see where the movie's at. If there's any changes and it, it, it's best he comes on. He doesn't mind it. This is promotion for him too. So it's not like, you know, you know, you got a good following, right? I see you, you get two, three, 4,000 people, you know, uh, you want Adam, you know, I feel bad. Like I stole Adam from you. Really? You know, Adam probably says that fucking red, you know, he probably says he gets Pelosi on there. What happened to me? Actually, he talked to me on the phone while I was waiting for you. Yeah. For a half hour, he talked to me on the phone. He talked to me on the phone. Yeah, 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 yeah. Outside of that, or I let you guys go. Red, I know it's an hour and a half. I'm sorry we were a little late today. Wednesday, I'll be on time. Wednesday, I'll be healthy, wealthy, and wise. And I got 
three new stories, really big stories. And uh, let's see what they think about these coming up. So I'll talk to you later tonight about them. And it's interesting. You know, it's, uh, I forgot there was some crazy shit that went on, you know. Um, I'll just talk real lightly. There was a guy that thought he was Nick Solosi at a mental ward. And he kept saying, I'm Nick Solosi, where I send more money. They wanted my dad to go down there and meet him. And then in the 80s, there was a guy that tried to extort money from the phone, calling every other week, wanted 50000 So, yeah, the FBI was there, and they were recording the lines. Some crazy guy was trying to extort money from us. Yeah, they caught him. We'll talk about that one. Yeah, so we got – there was a crazy shit out there, you know, that you – that that uh, never got there, you know. And uh, right away, the FBI interviewed me. They thought was, I, I was involved in it. Is that weird? <laughs> yeah. All right, you have all have a nice night, and uh, may the good Lord bless you. Take care. Okay, folks. <laughs> Joe has left the building. Thank you all. Thank you, one and all, for showing. It's kind of a long show. The combination of the videotapes and we met's testimony resulted in the conviction of two men on extortion charges. One of them was Frank Schweiz, known in syndicate circles as the German, a feared mob terrorist and a suspect in a number of gangland murders. He was described to me by other outfit individuals as uh, the most feared hitman. And uh, as he said to me, my reputation precedes me, son.